Denny, what are you doing with my credit card? Uh, I'm looking at flights home. Didn't we just go home? We did. We did. We uh, we went home, but uh, I think it's it's time to go back. It's time to go back home. Don't do it. No, I'm gonna do it. Don't do it. No, wait. Let me get there. Ah. Okay. That's done. That's it. <sighs> After sailing over 2,000 miles from New Orleans all the way down to Panama, the country, we moved Sundowner from the beautiful San Blas Islands to a marina nestled on the Caribbean coast in Portobello National Park. We had always planned to haul Sundowner out of the water this spring to do a few projects. We needed to paint the bottom and get her back in the water before transiting the Panama Canal. Next, we'd sail 4,000 miles across the Pacific to the Marquesas Islands in French Polynesia. However, when Tate's dad gave us plane tickets home to Louisiana for Christmas, we left San Blas early. With only carry-ons in tow, we hiked the two miles through the bird-filled jungle, avoiding rain and looking for a bus stop we had heard existed. Excited that it actually did exist, we made ourselves comfortable for the two-hour wait for our first bus. The buses in Panama are the old 80s style U.S. school buses, outfitted with wild paint jobs and extensive sound systems. Every day is a party in Central America. This bus would be one of three over the course of eight hours we took, and along the way, we found neither English speakers nor gringos. Nope, none. This was purely a local's route. We just sat back and enjoyed the breathtaking countryside. As night fell, we finally made it al aeropuerto Tocumán, home of the world's smallest and most expensive coffee. We had such a great time seeing our families again after a year at sea. And of course, steaks. Giant steaks. No, really, it was awesome to meet our two new nephews and eat lots of cookies over the Christmas holidays. We actually wore long pants and jackets again. A huge difference. We lived in air conditioning, had hot water on demand, coffee at the push of a button, and Chinese takeout down the street. We made memories to last a lifetime and caught up with dear, dear old friends. But mostly, steaks. Many, many steaks. The main topic of conversation was what our plans were after Panama. While we had been dead set on crossing the Pacific, the strongest El Nino since 1997 is supposed to last into the spring, really throwing a wrench in our plans. You see, when the Pacific water warms, the sea levels rise and can cause trade winds we depend on to reverse direction, die off completely, and create more storms. Not happy with the prospect of a tough ocean crossing, we began to consider other ways to spend the next year. We could head towards the Eastern Caribbean, which is full of cruise ships and more people, or hang out on the Pacific side of Central and South America, which is notorious for being cruiser unfriendly. Not deeply excited about either of these options, Tate and I began to feel apathy take over. Then, out of nowhere, over coffee at Ruby's Diner in the Houston airport, Tate sprung an incredible idea on me. Danny, he said, the gas prices are so low right now, why don't we spend the next year traveling the country in a small RV? Wow, seriously? What a crazy idea. In fact, a brilliant idea. We soon took flight to Panama and our new plan began to crawl. During our journey back to the boat through all the changing landscapes of Panama, Tate and I watered our plan with a rapid fire of ideas and possibilities. We just could not stop talking about it. Could we really do this? Leave the boat, buy an RV, and traverse the beautiful United States? If people didn't know it before, they'll definitely know it now. We are insane completely and totally off our rockers. But that's the beauty of it. It's wild, spontaneous, and it puts the wind back in our sails. Having refit and prepared for over five years before our sail down to Panama, we knew that this type of adventure actually is possible. We've already bought plane tickets home, and in a little less than a week we'll be back in Louisiana looking for our new temporary home. Don't worry. We most definitely are not quitting sailing. 
We'll return next year and get our faithful boat Sundowner ready to cross the Pacific, hopefully without El Nino. This means we have a lot of work to do, preparing the boat and getting her ready to be hauled out of the water and placed into long-term storage. We have to bag up all of our papers and fabrics and cushions and figure out what gear to bring with us into our new life. Is this really happening? Who knew this year would bring such a radical change and new outlook? We have a newfound energy. Not only are we committed to making our new idea a reality, we are also trying our hand at video blogging. We hope you'll join us from the coast of Panama to the coast of the U.S. There is no telling what we'll see or where we'll end up. What a way to live. Bye for now. Thank you.